Rebelsis is basically the pill version of Ozempic. While both medications are considered similarly effective, there are different ways you can take oral semaglutide that can greatly impact its effectiveness compared to the injectable forms of semaglutide like Ozempic and Wagovi. So what are the different ways you can take it to maximize its effectiveness? To get the most out of oral semaglutide, you'll be told to follow a number of specific steps. First, you'll need to take it on an empty stomach. Second, you can take it with no more than half a glass of water. Third, you'll need to avoid eating for at least 30 minutes after taking the pill. But why are these steps important? And can we improve on these steps? Let's break down each instruction to understand better. Taking oral semaglutide on an empty stomach is probably the most important. When you take the pill, it disperses in your stomach, which is where it's primarily absorbed into the bloodstream. Studies show that if you take oral semaglutide with food, it essentially isn't absorbed at all and barely shows up in your blood. However, when taken on an empty stomach, semaglutide is absorbed effectively. So taking oral semaglutide before you've eaten anything, for example, first thing in the morning, is essential. If you take it with food, it might not work at all. The next important step is to take oral semaglutide with no more than half a glass of water. Research has shown that semaglutide is much better absorbed when taken with less water. Studies show that there is about a 40% decrease in absorption when taken with a full glass, that's 240 milliliters of water, compared to a quarter cup, that's 50 milliliters of water. Later studies found that taking it with 50 milliliters of water is about the same as 120 milliliters, which is why the current recommendation is to use it with no more than half a glass of water. Finally, you'll need to wait at least 30 minutes after taking oral semaglutide before eating. Studies comparing different wait times of 15, 30, 60, and 120 minutes found that the longer you wait to eat, the more semaglutide is absorbed. For example, waiting 120 minutes resulted in over three times more absorption than waiting only 15 minutes. The final recommendation of 30 minutes is likely a balance between effective absorption and practice practical waiting time. I mean, it might be pretty difficult to not eat for two hours after taking oral semaglutide. To sum it all up, the absorption of oral semaglutide is significantly affected by how and when you take it. If you take it with food, absorption is almost completely blocked. Taking it with a full glass of water instead of the recommended half a glass can reduce absorption by up to 40%, making a 14 milligram dose feel more like 8 milligrams, or a 50 milligram dose feel more like 30 milligrams. If you wait only 15 minutes instead of the recommended 30 minutes before eating, absorption can be cut in half. So a 14 milligram dose would feel more like 7 milligrams and a 50 milligram dose more like 25 milligrams. Doing both, taking it with a full glass of water and eating only 15 minutes later would make absorption even worse. On the other hand, waiting one hour instead of the recommended 30 minutes before eating can increase absorption by up to 25%. This means that a 14 milligram dose would feel more like 18 milligrams and a 50 milligram dose more like 63 milligrams. Waiting two hours could increase the absorption by up to 70%. So a 14 milligram dose would feel more like 24 milligrams and a 50 milligram dose more like 85 milligrams. Now, waiting two hours before eating might seem tough, but it could be easier if you're also intermittent fasting and skipping breakfast. For example, a theoretical dosing schedule to maximize absorption could be 1. Wake up in the morning at 9 a.m. 2. Take rebelsis with no more than a half a glass of water and three, then don't eat lunch until noon. This would improve your absorption of semaglutide and combine the benefits of intermittent fasting, making both more effective. It's important to know that these calculations are theoretical. My recommendation is to always follow your doctor's advice and the normal dosing guidelines. However, theoretically speaking, increasing the time you wait before eating after taking oral semaglutide could boost its effectiveness. Now let's get into why this happens. Unlike food or typical medications, oral semaglutide is primarily absorbed in the stomach, 
not the intestines. Studies involving dogs provide insight into this process. They compared semaglutide levels in dogs with their stomachs blocked off from their intestines to those with normal stomachs and found similar absorption patterns. This shows that semaglutide does not need to enter the intestines and is absorbed through the stomach, and this absorption can be easily disrupted by food or any other substances in the stomach. Many clinicians consider Ozempic and Rebelsis therapeutically similar. However, people often find oral semaglutide like Rebelsis less effective because they don't strictly follow the dosing instructions. The strict requirements for taking Rebelsis on an empty stomach with limited water and waiting before eating mean it can be much less effective if these instructions aren't followed precisely. In contrast, injected semaglutide like Ozempic or Wagavi is easier to use. It requires just one in injection per week, with no strict rules about food or water. This makes it more convenient and ensures nearly 100% absorption regardless of your eating habits or schedule. So oral and injected semaglutide are therapeutically similar if used correctly. However, if you prefer not to worry about the strict dosing instructions, the injected versions might be a better option for you. Another interesting difference between injected and oral semaglutide stems from the fact that semaglutide is a fragile molecule, easily destroyed by stomach acid. Many of these GLP-1 agonists, like semaglutide, are vulnerable to the acidic environment and digestive enzymes in the stomach and gut. That's why many GLP-1 agonists, such as Monjaro, Trulicity, and Ozempic, are injected to protect them from the stomach acids and enzymes. So how does oral semaglutide manage to survive? The answer lies in a compound called SNAC. SNAC acts as an absorption enhancer, protecting semaglutide from the harsh gastric environment and aiding its absorption through the stomach lining. Studies show that SNAC significantly improves the absorption of oral semaglutide into the bloodstream compared to taking semaglutide without it. Currently, there are three versions of semaglutide, with a fourth version for weight loss coming soon. This means that there will be one injected and one pill form for both diabetes and weight loss. While the drug itself is the same across all versions, the dosing methods vary. Semaglutide is always started at a lower dose and gradually increased until you reach the maximum dosage. Brands approved for weight loss have more steps and a higher maximum dose compared to those approved for diabetes. Though people sometimes use semaglutide off-label for different purposes, FDA approved uses are important for insurance coverage and cost. Semaglutide is expensive regardless of use, but the pill and injected forms of semaglutide cost about the same monthly. It's when it's prescribed for weight loss, as with Wegovy, that the cost is usually much higher. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. Do you use oral semaglutide like Rebelsis? And what are your experiences? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date. If you found this informative, please leave me a like and share this video with some you know who use the info.